in any complex and functional organization there is bound to be hierarchy of organization or ranks of organization same goes for life and living organisms in this video we will be looking at the different levels of organization in life particularly cellular organization from the atomic level to the molecular level to the cells the tissues the organs and the organ systems when we think of cellular organization what comes to mind is the cell and to have the cell we have to go all the way back to the atoms atoms of various elements combine to form the molecules some common atoms of elements that help in the formation of the molecules most of the common molecules in life are carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen forming a major chunk of most of the common biomolecules the sugars the peptides the proteins and the lipids where the simple sugars are formed from six atoms of carbon 12 atoms of hydrogen and six atoms of oxygen while for the peptides we have a central carbon connected to two functional groups the carboxylic group and the amino group where r is a side chain and the proteins are formed from the peptides the peptides are the monomers of the proteins that is several peptides combine together to form the proteins while the lipids are formed from carbon hydrogen and oxygen but the oxygen content in lipids is less than that of the sugar which is a good thing this lesser oxygen content allows the lipids to store even more energy one molecule of the lipids can produce twice as much energy as that of sugar i'm saying all these things to prepare your mind for when we will be taking the biomolecules in depth moving on these molecules also combine together to form organelles of which a major molecule a major biomolecule that constitutes a large chunk of of the dry mass of the animal cell is protein the protein could be found in most organelles but the protein is not the only organ is not the only molecule that could be found in life for example in the lysosomes we will find digestive enzymes the golgi body we will also find lipids and in the cell membrane it is made up of phospholipids the nucleus is made up of genetic material where we would find the dna 
which is made up of the nucleotides. The nucleotides, which also contains a pentose sugar, a nitrogen base, and a phosphate group. And the mitochondrion, we would find ATP. All these organelles come together performing their very unique and important functions to form the cell, the basic unit of structure and function, the basic unit of life, of which there is no life apart from the life of the cell. All organisms are made up of one or more cells. All cells arise from pre-existing cells. If you guessed, you guessed correctly. I just stated the three cell theories. The first two by M. Sheldon and C. Schwann between 1838 to 1839 and the other by Vakal. These cells could also combine to form tissues. But before we look at that, let's look at the different types of cells that we have. We have the prokaryotic cells. These are the cells found in organisms like the bacteria, and the eukaryotic cells. The eukaryotic cells are the cells found in all other organisms except those in Kingdom Monera. When cells combine, they form tissues. The tissues are formed from specialized cells of the same embryonic origin, organized by structure and function. And there are four basic types of tissues in animals, three basic types in plants, which could be remembered as menk and veg. Menk in animals, veg in plants. Very easy to remember. Let's look at them. Menk. In animals. Veg in plants. M in mank means the muscular tissues. E means the FP epithelial tissues N stands for the nervous tissues C stands for the connective tissues the muscular tissues are the tissues that contract thereby generating tension, granting an organism the ability to respond to stimuli. And they could be classified as skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. 
skeletal smooth and cardiac these tissues are very crucial to the survival of any living organism and for the epithelial tissues the epithelial tissues are those tissues that cover the body surface they form the lining of inner cavities and they have the main functions of protection secretion absorption in the body an example is the skin surface the lining of the gastrointestinal tracts and so on they also could be classified based on their shape as squamous cubodial and columnar is it just me or does that sound like a square a cube and a column i'm just saying that could help your recall of the epithelial tissues of how they could be classified based on shape now for the nervous tissues the nervous tissues are those tissues found in areas like the brain the spine the nerves they are made up mainly of the neurons and the neuroglia these are the tissues that allow the body to send and receive signals the they could send impulses via electrochemical signals and they are just so crucial for an organism's survival finally for the connective tissues the connective tissues as you could have guessed they are connectors as the name implies they are the tissues that help in connecting different parts of the body they bind structures together they provide support and protection to the body parts now let's look at the three basic tissues in the plants in the plants as i said they could be remembered as veg veg in plants they are v standing for the vascular tissues E standing for the epidermis and G standing for the ground tissues. And that's for that. Now these tissues could also combine to form anatomically distinct structures known as the organs they are referred to as anatomically distinct structures because from their size their shape their color their texture you could distinctly recognize them they are unique for example, looking at this image on the screen, I could recognize this as the mouse, these two as the salivary gland, this as the stomach, this as the pan pancreas, this as the large intestine this as the small intestine this is the 
gallbladder and this is the liver this is the esophagus and so on so you could see from all these varying characteristics they could be recognized distinctly and that's why they are referred to as organs now these organs could also combine to form organ systems and other level in the hierarchy of organization these organ systems perform a very distinct function for example looking at the image we have on the screen if you guessed that this is a system all these organs together are a system you are right if you guessed that this is the digestive system you are even more right they perform the function of digestion in the human body there are about 11 11 unique systems in the human body each of them performing their unique functions let's look at them in depth the organ systems in animals could be easily remembered if you could remember what i'm just about to say now you could remember the 11 of them Deciros. Deciros. if you could figure out that and say it back to me Deciros. you've remembered the 11 of them it's as easy as as this De C Ross. If you look at the screen and ask, but there are just eleven letters on the screen. Sorry, there are just seven letters on the screen. You are right. What if I put it like this? Desi Ross with the R having a square. Is that much of a difference? No. Desi L N M Ross. Let's look at what each of these letters stand for. Let's write that out again. De C Ross. Where D stands for the digestive system. E stands for the endocrine system c stands for the circulatory system i stands for the intercumentary system L stands for the lymphatic system. N stands for the nervous system. M stands for the muscular system. R we have two R's. So the first R stands for the reproductive system. The 
The second R stands for the respiratory system. And U stands for the urinary stroke excretory system. And finally, S stands for the skeletal system so how easy was that very easy so you could remember all the 11 systems in the human body by just remembering this this serious so easy so a brief run through of what each of these systems do the digestive system from the name you could figure out is for digestion it's for processing foods and absorbing nutrients the endocrine system provides communication within the body by making use of hormones the circulatory system transport substances to and away from the cell the integumentary system protects against injury and fluid loss the lymphatic system defends against infection and diseases. The nervous system is for sending signals across different parts of the body. The muscular system, very necessary and important for the survival of an organism, provides ability for motion, support and heat production, especially during cold periods. The reproductive system responsible for producing sex cells and hormones. The respiratory system drives air to areas where there could be exchange of gases, keeps the organism alive. While the urinary system removes excess water, salt, and waste products from the cells from the blood and from the organism from the body of the organism in general while the skeletal system provides support it gives a frame to the organisms it protects the delicate delicate organs and soft tissues in the body and that's that for the organs the organ systems in in the human body now for the organ systems in plants there are just two types of organ systems in plants one is the root system beneath the ground and the shoot system above and that's as easy as it gets check the description for the key points from this lesson and be sure to actively recall all the things you've learned in this lesson. Also, if you found this video helpful, kindly give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more helpful content. See you in the next videos.